Great. Welcome to Digital Asset News. They get top stories in crypto and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. So today, as you can tell, we are not in the usual pool room. We are in Houston, Texas. Take care of some real estate issues that came up, and uh, it's just really how it goes. So before we start, I'm using a different setup, a different microphone, a different Wi-Fi service, a different direct connection. So before we get going, let's make sure that uh, everything sounds good and is good before we happen. Now, there's a little bit of a delay with, uh, with YouTube from when I actually talk and ask the questions to when people can actually answer me uh, in the live stream. So if you're watching the recording, sorry, but I think it's uh, better safe than sorry to do these things before I did it like before where I just talked for like 30 minutes <laughs> and, I was, and I was totally silent. So uh, first close crypto says, uh, yes, hello, friends. Sounds like good. Beardy is here. Thank you so much, Beardy, for being here. Taysu, uh, TNDS, Crypto Esquire. Everybody's here. Uh, and then Dolby Wolf says, looking for any insights you might have. Let's shake that trust and learn the lessons needed to grow. All right. Fantastic. So we are good here. Let's jump into what is going on with the market. So today, uh, looking at uh, June 25th. And not a bad day, honestly. I mean, uh, I've been gone for a couple of days. We were traveling and whatnot. But uh, I can see that the market cap actually went above $1 trillion. That was great. Pretty happy about that. And of course, in true fashion, over the weekend, we crashed back down again. So we are now not a trillion dollar uh, asset market. We were just a multi-billion dollar asset market as the Bitcoin loses a little bit. Now we're 21,000, Ethereum down. I think everything's down a little bit in 24 hours and then we're oscillating. And the thing is, I don't see the narrative where we could start to really rally. I don't see where the funds are coming from. from. I don't see where the supply chain issues uh, talk about recessions. And I know we had a, a nice little rally on the traditional market. Earnings look pretty good. Uh, people were talking uh, positively. Uh, about what was happening in the traditional space. But in all honesty, in the long term, I just I just don't see uh, some long term growth. I think we have a little bit of pain to go through. And uh, you can look at it as that as a negative thing or as a positive thing. It just depends on, on what you see. So that is essentially is uh, what is going on uh, with the market itself. And then we take a look at uh, some on chain data. Uh, because we see this different types of pain, this is from crypto quant. And there's always the six uh, different uh, dashboard views that I take a look at. And uh, one of the things that, that struck me is uh, Bitcoin miner outflow. And what's happening here is, you know, people are selling, miners are selling. And if we can actually blow that up and take a look over the, uh, let's just do the one day, or excuse me, the one week. It doesn't look too bad. Uh, actually, I think it's uh, doing okay. But there's this little spike here, 21st of June. If we go for the one month, you can see in the last, oh, week or so, there's been an, in, an influx of miners selling. And of course, when the price starts to go down, the miners have to keep the lights on. They have to pay some bills, some overhead, and that's just how it goes. That's uh, the free market. And now, of course, you know, some people say, well, it's still profitable even when they get down to like you know, $6,000 or $7,000. Well, I've seen reports that say it's not, it's not even that. I, I've seen reports that says uh, below 19000 So it depends on actually where you're at. It depends on the electricity that, uh, as far as usage, it depends on the different miners that you have. And in some cases, miners got to sell. And that's just what it is. And then uh, exchange reserves, we can see that there's still a little bit of a, thankfully, uh, Bitcoin is coming off the exchanges. We know as it goes on, that means it's uh, more sell time. Ethereum, actually, there's been a little bit of an increase in Ethereum going up. I wonder what's going on there. Stake deep and such. Leverage ratio is finally dropping down because people finally get it that uh, they can't do uh, tons of, of leverage plays and, and expect to get out unscathed. So if that was you, sorry, that's how it goes. And then also the uh, market value to realize value ratio, we're still below. Let me blow this up so you can see it. Bum, bum, bum. There we are. We are still below. The 1.0 mark and 
anything statistically, anything below this, this line right here, below 1.0 usually indicates uh, some bargain basement deals as far as Bitcoin goes or the crypto market itself goes. And we've been down below that since 13th of June. And this is when the Bitcoin price was 22,000, when it was 20,000, when it was 18,000 and 17,000. And we're still below that market value. So let me just think about that in the comments section. Let's move on to the big story or one of the stories, Celsius and Goldman Sachs. Is it a fake? So this was a, a quick story that was shared uh, over at CoinDesk. And it's interesting about how much information that they put into it and, and what could potentially be not a true story. So this is what's going on. Goldman Sachs is leading the investor group to buy Celsius assets. And of course, if you're, if you're new to the crypto space, you may not have heard of Celsius. And Celsius is a lending platform which uh, gives some pretty high yield. Uh, just by putting on your crypto assets and just kind of letting it sit there. However, uh, there were some issues, more, more specifically with uh, UST and, and, and STE, or staked ETH on Lido, and uh, doing some de decentralized finance plays, which didn't really work out too well in their favor, and then potentially even uh, some backstabbing in the background. This is all uh, cheese may and, and uh, potential, potential side stories. But uh, Celsius is not doing good right now as they are still locked up uh, for all the withdrawals. So there was a story about how Goldman Sachs is going to come in to potentially not bail out, but buy out. The firm is seeking $2 billion in commitments from investors to buy distressed assets at steep discounts if the crypto lender goes bankrupt. I can tell you right now, if Goldman Sachs comes in and to buy up all these assets, what does that mean for the people that have their assets stuck on Celsius? Uh, probably not good. Probably have to deal with the restructuring plan. Probably maybe even get back your assets, pennies on the dollars, potentially, potentially. But I'm going to show you why this might not be even a true story. So uh, the proposal deal would allow investors to buy up Celsius assets at potentially big discounts in the event of a bankruptcy filing. The people said, I don't know who those people are, but apparently some people said something. Goldman Sachs appears to be gauging interest and in soliciting commitments from Web3 crypto funds, uh, specializing distressed assets and traditional financial institutions with ample cash on hand. The assets, most likely crypto, have to be sold in the cheap, would then likely be managed by participants in the fundraising push. So that's nice. Uh, maybe not so much, but uh, that's the first story that we have. However, uh, this is Simon Dixon. If you don't know Simon Dixon, he's part of uh, Bank to the Future and... Uh, uh, plan, plan B investments, not to be confused with Plan B, the personality on Twitter. And uh, he is one of those crypto OGs that got into Bitcoin in 2010, 2011, has been an investor into small little places like Coinbase and Crack and those types of places. And uh, he's put together a, re a, a recovery plan for Celsius. And this is what he states on Twitter. More updates to follow, but the word from my source at Goldman Sachs is that there is no Celsius network deal with them. It's fake news according to them. And I want to stress this. It's fake news according to them. So somebody's right. Either it's Coindesk is right and the people who they're citing, or it is Simon Dixon who is right and the people that he's citing. And I'm not here to tell you who is right. I'm just telling you to report the news and give you both sides of the same story so you can make a more informed decision. He says, this is not coming from Celsius. I will reveal what I can, what, when I can, and remain in keeping with my non-disclosure agreements. Now, here's the thing. Uh, Simon has agreed to come on exclusively on the show next week and talk to us here at Digital Asset News and tell us exactly what he has heard, what is potentially going on, and, and the potential plan for the recovery for Celsius. So, uh, that'll be sometime we're hammering out the dates. It's either going to be like Tuesday or Wednesday. That'll be live. You'll be able to answer uh, all your questions or, or ask all your questions, and hopefully Simon can answer them. So uh, I would like you to be here, and I will be posting these things on Twitter and also talking about it on the channel. So if you haven't done so already, follow me uh, on Twitter, at News Asset. Link's in the description. And uh, let me know which who you think is right here. And let me know if you think that uh, a... Um, a buyout from Goldman Sachs is the best way to go, or 
maybe a more uh, uh, crypto centric person, such as Simon Dixon and Bank of the Future. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comment section. Let's talk about some more bailouts, or as I call them, buyouts. FTX plans to launch or plans to acquire stake in BlockFi. And this was a couple of days ago, but it's going to be relevant when we start to talk about the SEC. Here's what's happening. The acquisition talk comes the heels on the heels of BlockFi's announcement earlier this week that it secured 250 million line of credit for FTX, which the crypto industry largely recognizes as a bailout. Let me just say real quick that I don't see this as a bailout. I think this is a buyout. And um, if you've been around for a while, like I have, as you can tell, I'm a little older. <laughs> I can just tell you one thing, and that is that uh, as a new emerging business starts to starts to take shape and, and take form, a lot of these smaller companies aren't going to be able to make it. And they're going to be on the lookout for potentially bigger companies to buy them out. This is exactly what happened uh, with Amazon. Amazon started off as a bookstore, essentially. And then they started to branch out and they started to uh, buy up all these little companies, uh, also a bunch of warehouses. And places like Zappos and Whole Foods were just uh, absorbed into the ecosphere that is uh, Amazon. And it worked out uh, pretty swimmingly. Also, there's this little company called Facebook. And uh, at first, it was all just to keep, keep tabs of you and your friends. And then, of course, they started to buy out other social media platforms, such as uh, WhatsApp and Instagram. And that worked out pretty well for them. And I think this is the same thing that's going to happen uh, with crypto and digital assets. You're going to see these big companies like Sam Bakeman Fried and, uh, and FTX and uh, the other subsidiary, uh, Alameda Research. And they're going to go out and they're going to, you can call it a bailout. It's not a bailout. You don't have to pay. I mean, bailouts are pretty much like uh, free. They're going to buy out. They're going to be, they're going to start to partner up. They're going to start to buy in to these bigger or smaller, I guess. Uh, parts of crypto and digital assets and say, you know what? We don't want to build this from scratch, but we will partner up with you to absorb you essentially into the family and then uh, become very big. So this is what's happening with uh, FTX and BlockFi. And it's interesting that uh, there's no bailout for Celsius or, or buyout, only for BlockFi. So to finish this up, unnamed sources familiar with discussions between BlockFi and FTX told the Wall Street Journal on Friday that an equity agreement had not yet been reached, so things are still in flux. Prince explained, we're talking about Zach Prince, the CEO of BlockFi, on two that the, that the revolving line of credit will be subordinate to client funds, meaning that the company will meet its obligations to its customers before repaying FTX. So that's pretty awesome. You can get $250 million, you can uh, save your community, and then you can say, hey, FTX, uh, thank you for the loan, we'll pay you back in a bit. What do you think about that in the comments section? The last piece, which kind of ties this all together, FTX, CFTC, and the SEC. So pay attention to the companies that are making these enormous moves. And one of, and that is, of course, FTX. Listen to Pompliano and he, on Pomp's podcast, and he started to talk about how he thinks FTX is, is like the, uh, uh, the Oracle of Omaha. Uh, they are... They think that, that FTX is akin to Warren Buffett. When Warren Buffett came in in 2008, 2009 for the financial collapse and started to actually you know, buy out different people because he had all this money just sitting on the sidelines because he knew it was going to happen. I, I think the same thing's happening right now. There's a bunch of uh, collapse. There's distressed companies. And distressed companies are the easiest and the cheapest to pick up. Here's what's going on. So we saw that with uh, BlockFi, and here's how CFTC gets involved. So FTX's regulatory head says CFTC has considerable amount of openness to proposals. FTX's head of U.S. regulatory strategy says the committees or the, the CFTC, Commodities, Futures, and Trading Commission, has shown openness to its proposal to offer direct access to trade Bitcoin and Ethereum on margin with, without intermediaries. What's interesting about here is there is no other talk of other, other cryptos right now. It's only Bitcoin and Ethereum, only. And why is that? Well, maybe it's because if I had to bet, if I was a betting person, I'm not a gambler, but I would bet if the, if the CFTC 
and the SEC sort of work together, which they are over here. But if they do that, they might say, well, commodities, Bitcoin's a shoe in And Ethereum might be, might be that, especially if you, <laughs> it really does have a lot of utility just in the gas fees. I think that was the 4D chess they were playing. But maybe Bitcoin Ethereum is just going to be a commodity and everything's going to be a security. I don't know. I'm not a part of the SEC. So this is what's going on, though. At first, there might have been some amount of skepticism. But by the end of the discussion, this is uh, FTX talking about it. There seemed to be a considerable amount of openness to what we're trying to do. This is Mark Wetchin, head of policy and regulatory strategy at FTX US and former CFTC commissioner. I can tell you, it never surprises me that... Uh, all businesses are built on relationships. I don't care who you are or where you are. And the people that know people, you get those people on your board and they start to make deals. It's amazing. They can just reach out with a phone call. Hey, Larry, what are you doing? Guess where I'm at now? FTX. Yeah, wife's okay. Hey, you know what we should talk about? <laughs> we should talk about working together, CFTC and uh, FTX. And here we are. He says, uh, I think there's generally a high level of interest and intrigue in our proposal by the CFTC. We believe that they have a view that the proposal actually addresses a lot of interesting different issues that the CFTC has dealt with for some amount of time. The crypto exchange has proposed an automated collateral system that would require customers to deposit collateral and have enough funds to cover margin requirements. Calculate automatically. Okay. If the margin fell too low, an automatic selling process for the investment would start. This would all be on margin, of course. Not just basic back and forth spot trading. While the new system tries to solve for the mismatch of speed for crypto derivative versus the current clearing house model, some worry it can intensify selling pressures during times of market stress. And we've seen that recently, haven't we? Everything, everybody's a genius in the bull market. Then all of a sudden in the bear market, we figure out who's swimming naked because the tide just rushes out. And here we are. The proposal before the CFTC would require even more initial margin for participants before they can trade. I have to agree with this one. I got to tell you, uh, I'm not a trader, so uh, just take this with a grain of salt. I could be wrong here. I could be wrong. But I find that people who trade on margin are uh, especially, or just leverage plays, they sometimes don't realize the ramifications, and you see a lot of liquidations. Now, some people can handle that, but uh, I think some people can't. And I think that sometimes we have to protect people from themselves. Now, this is not going to be a popular opinion. I can tell you right now. In the comments, people are already typing up or in the live chat right now, they're already typing, you're an idiot uh, because we should just do our own things and, and, and keep the government out of it. In some ways, I agree. But in some ways, shape or form, and you know them, they're friends of yours, probably in your family. They're just not that smart. And they just really, and I hate to say this, but in some way, shape or form, <clears throat> people need protection from themselves uh, in, in some days. Will this go through? Not for sure. But I got to tell you, I'm getting sick and tired of seeing everybody, uh, this, these leverage plays, these 25, 50, and 100x, and people getting liquidated like crazy, and the volatility of the market is just uh, insane. It's a good, actually good for me as a dollar cost averager because I just let all those traders make those mistakes, and I just pick up cheap crypto. It happened really well for me in 2018, 2019, and 2020, and it's happening again. Um, we can keep doing it. It doesn't matter to me per se but I think it matters for some people. Anyhow, sound off in the, in the comments. I'm sure I'll get crushed for that one. So it's a risk-reducing feature, and this is one of the reasons why we think the agency should be excited because the model requires all customers collateral. Okay. Meanwhile, Wetchin says he expects more federal oversight of crypto markets will create more clarity. I like that. And bring in more investors into crypto, quelling volatility. As soon as it happens, there's going to be much more clarity for the investor, much more clarity for the institutional investor, the institutional investor is going to become uh, more and more comfortable stepping into this space. All of that is going to lead to a significant maturing process of industry and, of course, a greater influx of funds. And that, I believe wholeheartedly. The thing is, is that the people who have been here for quite some time, not all, but most, uh, the Bitcoin OGs, they don't want uh, these institutional investors to come in Uh or they don't, excuse me, they don't want the regulatory clarity, which would lead the institutional investors to come in even more heavy. So, so uh, there's pros and cons to everything. But regardless, we're going to see regulation come in, whether people like it or not. And just take a look at Terra and USD and the collapse of that uh, algorithmic stablecoin to see some 
regulation come in. Anyhow, let me just think about that and then to tighten this up and get done. The SEC. Now, all of a sudden, Gary Gensler wants to work with the CFTC. Why? And it's really because it says right here, the latest move comes as the SEC sees its grip weaken. So here's what's going on. Let me blow this up. SEC Gary Gensler, which I think he's having a tough time with this Ripple lawsuit, has taken a tough stance in the crypto market. Some lawmakers even contacted the SEC questioning his tactics and how the SEC could stifle innovation. True. On Friday, SEC Chairman Gary Gensler spoke to the FT. He states he aims to form an alliance with other financial agencies to ensure that crypto platforms don't fall through the regulatory cracks. Gensler is reporting talking with the CFTC about an agreement to ensure that crypto trading has the appropriate safeguards and transparency. And he states this, I'm talking about one rule book on the exchange that protects all trading regardless of the pair, be it a security token, which he believes it's everything besides Bitcoin, uh, versus security token, security token versus commodity token, which is probably Bitcoin, maybe Ethereum, commodity token versus commodity token to protect investors against fraud, front running, manipulation, as well as providing transparency over order books. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Let's see if he can do that. And then uh, Gary has frequently vocalized the views that crypto should fall under the SEC. However, CFTC Commissioner uh, Summer Marsinger thinks otherwise. And of course, the commissioner reportedly said that U.S. lawmakers and crypto developers were looking to place the authority to regulate digital assets with the CFTC. And I would like that because it seems like the CFTC and even even before uh, uh, the the current head, you had uh, Quinones and he was really pro crypto. I like the way that things were going. And of course, he stepped down and and now we've got uh, Summer uh, Marsinger. And we'll see how it goes, but I'd like that to, to move in that direction because it seems like Gary is not too happy for whatever reason uh, for all the all the crypto projects. Maybe he's right. Maybe there's a lot of, uh, maybe they're all just securities and he wants to regulate them. Although I got to tell you, uh, to go up to Ripple and, and XRP, I just don't see how that is, is a security per se. It really has a utility, but that's just me talking. And not that I'm like the, a huge uh, XRP proponent, but I mean, in all honesty, I don't see the, the point of that one. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And that takes care of the news today. There is one more thing uh, I'll just add. And that is I just finished up uh, a couple of days ago, I finished up uh, the interview uh, with the gents over at uh, Sweatcoin. And I got to tell you, I think it's going to do pretty well. <laughs> Did you know that Sweatcoin is the number one health and fitness app globally? Not just in like 33 countries or 66 countries. Like it's in the entire world. It is the number one health and fitness app. You can download it today, right now. I've got it on my phone and it's free. And guess what? Uh, you can start walking and you can get those sweat coins. And then when the token generation event happens on September 12th, 2022, you'll get airdrop those tokens. Not in the US. That's coming later. And uh, that's just not for me. That's from the CEO, Oleg. I will uh, put out that deep dive video as soon as I get everything else done that I got to get done and uh, we'll go from there. So that takes care of the news.